Hello, I'm Lauren from Lauren Watkins Art, and I'm going to show you how to draw this seascape using soft pastels. Now I'm starting off taking my T ruler and just lining that up with the paper to create a horizon line. Um, I'm keeping it in the lower third of the paper because visually it's better for our eyes if the if things aren't dead center. And so I don't want my horizon line to be in the center of my painting. Now I'm just blocking in the, the large land, uh, land masses, and this will help me um, know where I need to start putting the color. Now you'll see me kind of angle my, pen, my pencil a little bit as I draw, and that's because I'm trying to get the angle of, match the angle of my picture to what I'm drawing. And that will help make my picture be more accurate if the angles of the lines are correct. Now I'm just blocking in roughly the, the sky and the shapes. I'm not trying to be too perfect right now. I'm just getting an idea of where all the shapes will be as I work. This is just an underpainting. Um, now I'm doing it with the green. Now I'm taking a synthetic hawk hair brush, just a cheap oil painting brush, and dipping it and rubbing alcohol and rubbing out um, those lines. And I like using rubbing alcohol because it dries a lot quicker, so I, it doesn't saturate the, the painting as much. And I, it doesn't get as muddy um, as if I brushed it out with water. And now I'm just block, um, doing the same with the grass, just blending it all out, kind of getting an idea of where I want it to be. Now I'm going to let this dry fully before I go on to the next stop, step. I use a heat gun a lot of the times if I need something to dry quickly. I got to keep it moving so it doesn't burn the paper, but it really helps speed up the process. Now I'm just taking a another just cheap synthetic brush. This one's an acrylic painting brush. It's like a white tacklon brush, and I am blocking in the shadow areas of uh, where of my painting. Now I'm using uh, ink for this. Um, sometimes soft pastels, it's hard to get really dark colors and it's hard to um, get the contrast needed to make something look realistic. And so using ink helps me get those darks in without having to do a lot of layers. And it also gives me um, visual markers of where things need to be as I paint um, because it'll be it will be visual um, visible as I paint for a long time and so I won't lose my spot on the painting and I can make sure my painting looks how I want it to now my tape peeled up a little bit so I just tape that back down um, today I'm using U art sanded paper in 600 grit and Pastel pencils are from Stiblo, and then the squarish pastel pen pencils you can kind of see on this side, those are uh, new pastels from uh, Prismacolor, and then the round, the big round ones are Jack Rich Richardson pastels, and so that's the, the main supplies I'm using today. Um, I'm starting to block in the clouds just using a wide variety of blues and whites just trying to get the basic shapes in. I'm not I'm still not being too fussy right now just kind of getting the basic shapes in. Now I'm taking a, a plastic palette knife and kind of blending it out a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna you'll see me remove my picture a few times um, and I'm just knocking off the pastel dust that uh, builds up. I you typically work on pastels um, with my my painting being vertical on an easel but for filming this um, I just kept it only semi reclined back so uh, it's okay to knock off the dust that builds up. Um, just don't blow it. I just shake it off over a garbage can. You don't want pastel dust getting in your face. Now I'm starting to block in the ocean. I kept my stripes very horizontal, uh, my strokes horizontal, um, because that will give our eye a better understanding that it's water we're trying to paint. 
Now I'm just adding some browns to start building in the, the sand of the, the path. One of the, um, the, one of the unique things about pastels is instead of using a paintbrush, you're applying your pigment directly to your paper. And so it really, instead of using a different type of brush to get a different effect, you have to learn how to um, push hard or push soft um, and how to manipulate that piece of pastel to get your desired effect. Now, I've added some base layers of green and I'm just blending that out using another palette knife. I'm using a more pointed palette knife because I can get um, into more fine nooks and crannies. Now I'm just adding some more layers to the sky. I'm going to be doing a lot of layers, especially to the sky. Um, that will really help give it some depth and dimension. Um, so don't be in a rush. Just take your time. If you don't like a layer, and some layers are going to make it look worse than before, and that's okay. Just add another layer and kind of blend it, see where it takes you, and then see what needs to be fixed. Um, I am keeping the darker blues um, at the top of the picture because visually, um, if you look out at a distance, the sky is darker at the top and then fades to a warmer kind of gray color. And so you want to do that same thing when you paint because that's what's going to help your painting look more realistic. It's, going to what, it's what's going to make it have more depth. Now I'm just blending that with a palette knife. I like using the palette knives because they don't overblend. Um, if you use your finger and stuff, it's really easy to start over blending. Now I'm adding some grays. If you look at a cloud, the clouds aren't straight white. There's a lot of, there's a whole gray scale to them and they might have other colors in them. So um, don't be afraid to add shadows to your clouds. That's what's going to make them look more realistic. Now this tool is called a rubber shaper. It's commonly used um, for pottery, but it's a, I found it's a really useful tool um, for, for painting. It's got kind of a rubber end and they come in different shapes and you can use them for different effects as you're working with pastels. Now I'm taking um, some workable fix stuff from Kylon and I sprayed that and let it dry. The workable the workable fixative um, can it can make it so you can add more layers on the top, but I'm using it I use it mostly to darken large areas. If I've been working on something and I realize it, there's just not enough darkness to it and the whole area needs to darken up, a light layer workable fixative will darken that whole area without having to rework the entire uh, piece. It's also good if you need to change something because it will help hold down those bottom layers if you need to change an area. Now again I'm adding um, more detail to the water, keeping my strokes horizontal. Um, I want them to look different than the strokes in the sky and on the grass and so keeping them horizontal will help it look like more calm water. And sorry, my head's in the way. I'm still getting used to filming. I moved my camera to to accommodate my easel, and apparently I forgot where my camera was when I was working. Now I'm just starting to add some details to um, the beach that's kind of hinted at in the distance, and and I'm just using my pencils. My pencils are really nice to get um, some finer detail in. But they're also harder, and so you can't do a lot of. You, it's really difficult to layer um, pastel um, pastel pencils over really soft, bigger pastels. So, when you work with pastels, you need to keep. You typically try to keep your hard pastels for your bottom layers, and then gradually work to your softer ones. Now I'm just starting to refine the shape of the grass that's on the left, and adding some more layers. I'm going to do a wide variety of greens and I'm going to be pulling colors that don't look like they belong in grass into the grass because it will add um, more visual interest and it will help uh, the picture look more harmonious. 
if you only have blue in the sky and no blue anywhere else, um, it, it will look more photoshopped. It won't look as realistic because the color of the sky really influences how everything else looks. Now I'm just adding some more dark um, to the sky and some, I added some teal to the bottom part of it and just some white layers. I'm really looking at my reference photo and seeing um, the direction the clouds are kind of going and then blending it, uh, drawing it and blending it in those directions. Uh, my reference photo, these clouds are really kind of wispy. They look like they're moving kind of fast. So I'm trying to get that same effect on this picture. And shaking off the extra pastels. Just adding some different um, colors and values of blue or shades of blue. Now part of the reason why I'm working on the sky so much right now is because I'm going to start working from the bottom, from the top down. Because um, the grass will start having um, lines that go over above the sky. And I don't want to have to um, kind of draw the sky around the grass. It's easier to just draw the sky and mostly finish it and then go on to the next layer. Now my sky, I'm adding like purples and different kinds of blues to it and that will help give it some interest. And I'm pulling some of the sky colors into that water again to help it look more realistic and harmonious. Refining the the horizon line. Now I'm starting to add some more layers to the grass. Now you'll see me adding purples and some red toned browns into the grass and that's partly to help um, neutralize the greens and make them look a little bit more realistic. Um, sometimes greens can look kind of synthetic looking and not very natural. And so if you add some purples or um, kind of red tones to it, that will help counteract that super brightness of the, the color and make it look more realistic. Now I've I've, you see me add a few layers of uh, more, and then I sprayed it with Krylon fixative. Again, just I didn't grab very many super dark pastels, and so just spraying that bottom section helped darken it up for me. And you need to have your under layers dark if you want like individual strands of grass to start showing up. That contrast is what's really going to make the other layers pop. So don't be afraid to make things dark. Now I'm starting to add the grass. Um, with the grass, I'm taking my pastel and kind of tipping it up on the edge of it and kind of rolling the picture, um, uh, rolling the pastel, I mean, sorry, and kind of getting grass-like um, strands or lines. I'm working on more of the forefront. Just kind of rolling my pastel. You, you can really start seeing it on this one. I'm just kind of twisting it and getting different effects from it. Again, you're your your pastel is your is your brush and so how you manipulate it is really going to change how how it looks now i'm trying to keep the grass that's further away visually 
I'm a little bit more blurred with not quite as many hard lines and that's going to help also create depth in your picture. The further away something is in your picture, the more um, softer it needs to be, um, less contrast, and lots of times it needs to be a little bit more blue and grayed down. And things tend to look more blue and gray the further away they are. Now I'm adding some some more um, grass to the forefront. And again, just using a variety of colors. Um, I I like adding unusual colors to my grass because um, I think it makes it look more visually interesting. Some, and now I'm adding some browns to the grass to kind of counteract some of the super bright green color. Now I'm starting to add some more shadows to the forefront to that bottom section and I also sprayed it with a little bit more Krylon to help darken it up. I don't typically use this much um, workable fixative. I just, um, the palette of pastels I pulled out to use today didn't have very many darks and at three o'clock in the morning I didn't really feel like <laughs> getting into all my other boxes of pastels. So now I'm starting to add uh, some more um, brown to it, but I'm this time I'm making them look like kind of flowers or plants that are a little bit different than the grass. This will help create a more interesting picture. So now you can see me pulling off um, some of the tape and blending it. This is just so I don't have any hard lines of where the tape was on the pastel. And it will make it easier to frame and it will um, keep um, from developing a halo where the tape met the paper. So it doesn't have to be perfect, just, um, just enough to make it so it's not super obvious there was uh, tape there. Now we're starting to get on the final um, last details of this picture. So I'm going to be, I, it's edited out, but I, I'd, take a, I'd often take a step back and kind of look at the picture, see what was standing out to me, what needed to be lighter, darker. Getting a, some distance from the piece you're working on will really help you know what areas need to be fixed and refined. Now, I wanted to add another um, big flower up top, kind of over the, the mound of grass you can see, but I accidentally drew it too high and the stem of it was too straight that it did not look natural. And I tried to fix it and work around it, but I just couldn't get it to work. So I'm just getting off the extra pastel dust and now I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna cover it up and uh, blend it into the sky and that is okay if you can try things on your picture and if you don't like it just uh, cover it up do another layer don't be afraid to make mistakes in your artwork because that's where you're going to learn new skills and you'll learn how to overcome problems because the worst thing is working hours on a picture and then finding out you don't like something you did and just throwing it away it's much better to learn how to um, correct a mistake and it's less frustrating. I'm just adding some details. I didn't want the water to be too smooth so I did add some um, little dashes to the water to make it look like it's a little bit choppier. 
and just kind of taking a step back, looking what needs to be darkened. Just those little corner sections need to be darkened up a little bit um, for the look I was achieving. And I'm letting that dry. You want to make sure the fixative dries before you work on top. And then um, I added some teals to the front. Now I'm trying to sign the picture, but there's too many layers to use a pastel picture to sign. So I'm just taking my softer pastel to sign my my name and that is it thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this painting